I am a lawyer and I am an economist by training. I'm a human rights defender for the last 20 years. And I'm the legal director of an organization called Halea, which basically fights for the rights of the marginalized, including the LGBTI community or the gay people in Uganda, including young mothers, including teenagers, women and the elderly and the landless. We basically work within Kampala, slums of Kampala, the capital city of Uganda and in the rural areas of Uganda, basically in Rengo and Masaka districts. Yeah, our main functions or activities um, include uh, organizing meetings. We normally organize meetings and we talk with these marginalized people. Uh, we hold uh, what we call focus group discussions. We also organize debates, uh, open talk debates, uh, where we involve people who are supposed to be leaders in society, uh, stakeholders like opinion leaders, and they engage them into conversations with leaders of these minority groups so that they can be heard and their views can be shared. We also um, give publicity to the plight, to the challenges facing these marginalized people. Uh, we have a magazine which we call the Open Talk Magazine, where we collect data, uh, views from these people, and we publish them in that magazine. We also use radios, we also use televisions where we are hosted and we talk about issues affecting people. Uh, for example, this very week on um, uh, Wednesday, I was hosted on a television. If you follow me on Facebook, you would see what I was actually discussing. Um, you view me on TV discussing these issues. So we use television, we use radios, we use newspapers uh, to reach out to these people. We also go to court where there are issues to solve, uh, where these people have been marginalized and they need representation. We go to court. We also lobby our parliament. We also lobby other government bodies to listen to these people, um, to have fair laws that affect these people. And um, we also engage the community in what we call music, dance, and drama, especially for young people. A very interesting question. Um, the situation right now is tense. We are from uh, a presidential uh, election and um, uh, the leading candidate, the leading opposing candidate, the, op the opposition was labeled a homosexual, a musician turned politician and known as Bobby Wine internationally. And you can see they were using the homosexuality banter to tell the public that he's a homosexual, shouldn't be um, uh, standing for the presidency, is bad, is immoral, is being influenced by the Western governments and people and all that. So the hate against homosexuals began around, 19, around 2010 when a pastor from US, there is a pastor from America who came here and that pastor uh, lobbied the government, talked to the president, and told him that the Americans were forcing Ugandans uh, to get into homosexuality. So the hate began from that time when that pastor came. Uh, the pastor Scott Scott uh, came here, and they, I, I was involved already with the work of activism with LGBT people, and I, I wrote a book which came out in 2012. I have a copy, I don't know whether I've seen a copy of it, uh, trying to uh, decampaign the homophobia that was coming out, trying to teach people about the need to uh, respect everyone, regardless of their sexuality. Of course, I didn't do it alone. I was also working with other people, other organizations, other stakeholders to publicize the need to avoid hating people because of their being gay or different from uh, the rest of the uh, people. So the hate began about 2010 with this pastor coming in. And then he, when he came in, he was joined by other evangelicals, of course, and some cultural leaders and the hate began. So right now, 
uh, homophobia is at its peak because as I've told you, a presidential candidate was labeled to be a homosexual. So people hate homosexuals in this country. People have been killing homosexuals. Though in the last few years, the hate had reduced a little. Only when to, it, it only came out uh, in the election when it escalated. So the hate is there and it's real. And we keep on talking about it so that people don't hate others because of their sexuality. Yeah, it is highly criticized, I can tell you. It is highly put of my brothers who are homosexuals, my own brothers who are homosexuals. I mean, we have grown with homosexuals. We have lived with them. It's natural, it's normal. But what they normally do as politicians is to use it to beat their opponents, to decampaign their opponents, because they know we live in a country where 90% of us are religious. Only a few of us are not religious. Homosexuality is always politicized. It's always politicized. Um, it doesn't matter if you are gay or not, in most cases now, but once you enter politics, once you enter politics and the government is using, is looking for anything bad to talk about you, they are more likely to call you homosexual. Because they know it doesn't make them get votes, they use it against their candidates. What we are working on right now is something to do with human rights of uh, people who have been in two campaigns against the president or against the government or opposition politicians who are now being jailed and denied their rights. So we have been campaigning for the rights of uh, Bobby Wine, for example, to be freed from uh, prison. I mean, from because right now he's under house arrest and many of his agents, his um, uh, uh, party members are in prison. So we have been talking about the need to respect everyone's right, to release them. That's one of the things we're working on right now, uh, getting them bail, uh, giving them advocacy, and ensuring that at least their rights are respected. That's for number one. Number two, we are still, um, taking the message against homophobia to the public. Uh, we are informing everyone that homosexuality shouldn't be criminalized, shouldn't be politicized, should be taken as another sex orientation. So it's a campaign actually to, which have been created during this uh, campaign. The other thing we're talking about right now is the issue of teenage pregnancies. Because during the lockdown, many girls have gotten pregnant because they are home and they, there are so many men around, boys who are idle around. And of course, sexual and reproductive health issues, the use of condoms, uh, contraceptives, is not all that much um, given attention to in this country. So many young girls in their thousands have gotten pregnant. So now what I've been doing right now is to sensitize the community to accept parents to accept their children, their daughters who are pregnant, not to send them away from home, but to find a way of living amicably with them. And where we can, we give some little support, but in most cases, we simply give counseling where we want children to remain home and to avoid being chased away from home simply because they are pregnant. So these are the issues we are doing right now. And of course, the other issue is the issue of land ownership. There have been a lot of deep displacements, people are being chased from their lands by rich people, by government officials. And so we intervene to handle such cases and not to give publicity to sensitize people about their land rights and all those things. Here, I can tell you, religion is being used. It's actually the most influencing factor uh, against homosexuals. I can tell you that um, uh, priests in churches, pastors in their churches, uh, imams in their mosques, plus um, traditional leaders, because we also have traditional religions here. All of them hate homosexuals. All of them condemn homosexuality. And they are going to use scriptures in the Bible, scriptures in the Quran to say homosexuality is bad. This country is having problems because of homosexuality. A God destroyed uh, Sodom and Gomorrah because of homosexuality. So the religious part of it 
is used to fuel homosexuality, to promote hate, to promote homophobia. I can tell you that um, uh, when one is not so much into a region, it's more likely to be rational. That's why most of us who are humanists, who are atheists like me, who don't believe in God or in gods, uh, we don't look at people from the perspective of religion. We look at people from the perspective of their being humans. That's why for me, it's very hard to hate a brother or a sister who is gay, but a religious person is going to lie on a Bible and say, no, look, even God hates them. So you better kill them. So yes, the region is the most number one point that fuels homophobia in Uganda. The church plays a big role in politics. And if you want to win any election in Uganda, you must identify yourself with either church or mosque. So the church promotes homophobia because politicians go there and identify with it and they promote hate through the church. And even the church will promote hate, attacking homophobia, I mean, uh, homosexuals, and attacking other countries which respect the rights of homosexuals. Yes, that's true. Um, basically, we have been doing that um, since 2007. Uh, we have a website. I would encourage you to visit it. It has some old photos. You will see our activities. We also have a Facebook page for Halea Uganda. Um, we have been doing, basically we have a department in this organization, uh, which is for sexual and reproductive health. And as from 2007, our team has been doing one important thing, training young people to know about their sexuality, that actually you can be different from others, you can love differently. I can tell you, if you check our website, you even see videos of debates on homosexuality, teenagers debating homosexuality in schools, because our team over the years has been going to schools and organize these debates where people talk about anything and everything, including sexuality in schools. And I will tell them it's okay to love different, but I can also tell you that many schools have testers from their <laughs> schools, many administrators in the schools, because they think when we talk, we talk so much, we talk openly, and we spare children. So we have had some challenges in some schools. But what I'm saying is that our team has been engaged in sexual health, reproductive health education. But also another problem we are doing right now is menstrual hygiene. And if you check our website and our page, our Facebook page, you will see uh, our team actually teaching young girls how to make pads, okay? these sanitary towels. Uh, how to go through menstrual days, how to keep uh, clean. You'll see these videos, you'll see these photos. So we are doing that, though with of course difficulties, but we have been doing that for so uh, many years. And our team, our department is very strong. Right here where I'm still in this office, I have boxes of condoms. I wish I could show you when you get online. You could see boxes of condoms here. You will see chats, which our team uses uh, to publicize that because we even go to slum areas and pub and distribute these condoms, including contraceptive uh, tablets, when we can afford them, we take them to slum areas and give them to women because their husbands don't want to use um, contraceptions and women keep on getting babies. We find one woman with eight babies, eight children, and she's below 30 years. So it's uh, pathetic. So our education has been on. We talk to women, we talk to young girls, we talk to others, we talk to religious leaders, we talk to school heads and students about sexual uh, reproductive health issues. At first, they loved us when he began talking about pregnancies, um, drug abuse. When you go to our website, you are going to see our magazines. You like them. We are talking about abortions. We are so open. At first, the society loved us so much. But the more we continued talking about the same, especially when you tackle the homosexuality, they hated us. Not all of them, but many people hated us to the extent that our office has been attacked consistently since 2012. Our office has been broken into so many times, over 10 times, and in most cases, our properties, computers are stolen. My home was attacked. 
my car was burnt in 2014, uh, 2014 September, on 30th September 2014, my car, my newer car was burnt to ashes. Uh, I was attacked when I was getting out of a studio. So, and my other colleague was attacked at his home. So it has been a spate of attacks, attacks, uh, because the, some people, not all of them, some people hate us, especially clerics, religious uh, fanatics, hate us because of the work we do. They think we are immoral. They think we promote Western values. We are lost, we are sellouts. So yes, our work comes with challenges. People will hate you, not because you have harmed them, but because you speak things contrary to what they believe to be uh, true or they think you are corrupting the morals of their children and all that. Yeah, they hate us. Though I can't say many, but some people really hate us. In my book, I talk about the history of homosexuality in Africa and the history of criminalizing homosexuality in Uganda. My book is very thorough. But um, uh, what I can tell you is this, that it has been part of humanity since the, the beginning of humanity itself from my research, from my history research and lessons, I can tell that homosexuality is not something imported. No, it's part of us, it's part of nature. Now, Africans have been homosexuals, just like they've been for so many, many generations. But it became a taboo to say that one is a homosexual when the British came here, the British colonized us and they only gave us independence in 1962. But before they left us, they left a colonial law to the effect that homosexuality was criminalized. Yet before they are coming here, our kings, our people were homosexual. For us here, we have a king documented who was a homosexual. And this king, in fact, used to have sex with uh, the pigs, with the boys working in the palace. So when the Christians came, they began attacking homosexuality. And the boys where this king was having sex with, the king was called King Mwanga, uh, refused to have sex with him. And it goes that the king got so much annoyed and burnt over 50 pages, these boys who are working for him, uh, in what is now called the Uganda Matters. So King Manga was a homosexual. And even before him, there are stories of soldiers, fighters, warriors who, who would go with their wives, but who were male like them. They go with them in battles. There are stories written in this country, in our history. So in a brief, I'm saying that homosexuality has been part of us as a people. It was only made a crime when the British came here and put it under our statutes, in our statutes, in our books. So yes, it was not criminalized. People could ignore you for being homosexual. They could maybe call you names, but they will never kill you. It was not illegal to be homosexual until when the British made it illegal. The, the state appreciates part of our work and hates another part of our work. Now, uh, because we support students to remain in school, uh, because we talk about the value to stay in school, the value to avoid the pregnancy. I can tell you, I have friends in the Ministry of Education. I have friends in the Ministry of Gender. I have friends in the media who invite me for talk shows. I mean, the state largely appreciates what we do, especially in promoting reproductive health messages, in promoting uh, abstinence, in promoting safe sex, to keep students in school. They really like that. But they hate us when you talk about democracy. They hate us when you talk about human rights. They hate us when you promote the rights of gay people. They, they, they will hate you. They hate us for talking about things which don't rhyme well. That even when we apply for funding, because sometimes the state funds some activities, like it can buy chairs in a private school, you know, 
which can help you give you some bursaries. They have refused to give us any financial support. That's where the hate is because they will identify us with the wrong things. Only because we talk about democracy, we talk about human rights, we talk about um, uh, children's rights, we talk about women's right to own their bodies. So sometimes some people will hate you because you speak things they don't want to speak about. So they won't give you any funding at all. 